Hi everybody, a very warm welcome along to our virtual Brands Hatch for the first round of the second season of official UK Mini Challenge E-Series racing. Richard John Neal here with you, hopefully going to be joined by Nathan Harrison, They're trying to get on board with us at the moment. Nathan, of course, the real world JCW champion from last year. So he'll be able to give us a really good insight into the driving and particularly the Indy circuit, which is, of course is where he wrapped things up last year. Great to be back with you. I think when we put the dates together, we didn't quite realise that we were going to be in full lockdown again. So whilst the lockdown is a pain, this is going to be an antidote for you for the next few weeks as we see who is going to emerge as our first 2021 champion. Brands Hatch Indy Circuit, one of the great configurations that we have in the UK. Just over one point, just under 1.2 miles long, just under two kilometres long. And for me, very much a track that I was brought up with. First visit there in 1976 for me. Today, race director is Rich Hayden, as ever. He'll be listening in. Here's our calendar. I mentioned that we've got eight rounds. And as is sort of traditional touring car style, we stop and start with Brands Hatch, wrapping things up on the Grand Prix circuit on the 6th of March. Now, you'll be aware that Toker have changed, or you may not be aware, Toker have actually changed their calendar. So the order of, of this was pretty much in sync with what we were going to have in the real world. But just a couple of days ago, Toker challenge, challenge changing, uh, changing everything around so that we have a slightly later start and we're hoping to welcome hospitality and race fans back into the real world. But here's our race schedule. 10 o'clock qualifying gets underway, 15 minutes of that. So we'll get to an idea of who's going to be quick over the eight rounds. And then we go into race one, 20 minutes long, race two, another 20 minutes. But race two has a top 12 reverse grid. That's slightly different from our last series when we had the top 10 reverse. The points are different as well. And don't forget, hashtag Mini Challenge UK E-Series to let us know who do you want to win OK, and let us know your thoughts on how the racing is going over the course of the morning. I know we'll, we'll, we'll have a amount of regular supporters from last series, hopefully some new ones this year as well, because we do have some new drivers that have come along. But pick up that tag and not just today, but uh, right the way through the series, give us a, a little buzz as to how you think it's going, who you think is going to win, who your favourite is, and so on and so forth. I'm sure we'll have the regulars, but... Let's have some new people joining in, being a part of the Mini Challenge E-Series for 2021. Okay, so the first thing that we've got for you to have a look at today is a hotline video from Ryan Elliott, the sim racer. So let's go over to Ryan to guide us around. Hi guys, welcome back for Season 2 of the Mini Challenge E-Series. My name is Ryan Elliott, driver of the number 2 Mad for Mini Motorsport car. And today... You're going to be joining me for a quick lap of Brands Hatch Indy. I went to Paddock Hill, we go down one gear. We're going to be really patient on the throttle. Don't want to get on too early and push ourselves off into the gravel. Maximising the exit. 
down three gears into druids waiting for the front to grip up and flat all the way on exit Grey Mills fourth in this car so we break in a straight line let the rear do a little bit of work and then push all the way as as far out as legally possible go down the Cooper straight a little lift off get the front pitched in smash over the curbs down two gears then we got a late apex so we just need to wait patient on the throttle and then flat all the way out thank you for joining me for a quick lap of Brands Hatch Indy and I hope you enjoy the rest of today's racing fantastic hot lap from Ryan Elliott he was really quick round here in the last series that we had I put in I over the pudding a little bit in terms of what Ryan was doing but he was a fantastic defensive driver and this is really where we, we started to tap into his potential not only as a, as a quick attacking driver but the reputation that he earned last year as a very 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 good defensive driver and that stood him in very very good stead last year he was hardly ever off the podium so whether that's going to be the case this year or not I don't know all of the top drivers if you've watched the preview chat that I had with Dave Marshall the overall reigning champion and Max Coates the real world reigning champion um, they think things are going to change quite big time because we've got new drivers coming in and several other drivers upping their game from last year as well. So whether Ryan is going to be able to make the podium uh, each time or, or very nearly each time over the course of the coming year, of course, remains to be seen. As we said, qualifying kicks off at 10 o'clock. Let's have a look at some of the drivers that we've got in the mix. Luke Kinsley, race winner last year, is back with us in car number eight Ryan Elliott that's the car that you're looking out for the guy that's just given us the hot lap Robbie Stapleford a new name uh, is Robbie and we'll talk more about him as we go through Josh Hislop is back the 23 the kinetic motorsport car and Max Edmonton he'll be a new name and that's a great livery on that car as well as is as ever the livery from Primex 71 Max Coates Alfie Glennie is with us as well, another real world driver who impressed us all on the circuits last year. Dan Zelos, touring car a development driver and of course front runner in the JCW Challenge for Real. Ethan Hamilton, another touring car driver back with us as well. Liam Lambert, he was so, so quick in the Coopers at the last couple of rounds. We've got uh, Jack Davidson as well uh, back with us. Mike Epps being tipped for good things. He was second quickest in practice this morning. Josh Stanton back with us as well, the Accelerate Motorsport uh, machine. And Max Bird, multiple winner in JCWs this year and very quick last year as well in the E-Series. As was Rob Butler. Great to see Rob back as well. Isaac Smith in the Riggs Esports Racing Team 1, 2, 3 car. Josh Martin, who we did an interview with uh, off-piste as it were last year, is with us too. In terms of the Sim drivers, Dave Marshall, the reigning champion, now running in the 10 tenths livery in the 66 machine. Jordan Brennan, the liquid molly car, back with us too in car number 98, Riggs Esports. Then Jack McIntyre, the silent assassin in the 37 car with the number 40 newcomer, Andy Dorman, the Eden Garage Motorsports car. 97, Tom O'Farrell, Holiday Homes Isla, is back with us as well. And the number six, Craig Timmins in the Mad Four Mini Motorsport car. Great to see Craig back in the championship too. 35, Simon Reed, the Ox 4 racing machine. And Damien Hall, uh, Barbadian or Bajan driver back, the Apex Fever car. 44, Matt Richards was quick on occasion last year as well. Jack Noller in the 36 machine, another newcomer to the championship, is going to be quick. And Kenny Press. In the high row motorsport treble eight car back with us as well so a superb lineup well done to all of those guys for getting their entries together and joining the lineup for our first 2021 i say first because there's a chance we might have a winter series again at the end of the season and uh not something we can worry about now because all the work has, has very much gone into what you're seeing on screen this morning here on the virtual brands hatch circuit i'm going to give a little shout out here because sadly on new year's day you might know that we lost the voice of brands hatch brian jones who was a, a superb commentator a lovely gentleman such an inspiration and joy to everybody who knew him and uh, our thoughts very much with brian's family 
and we remember him every time I see the brand Satch in the circuit. My days as a spectator, listening to him, the golf tones of Brian Jones, he was absolutely superb. Lovely man as well. Not only did I get a chance to listen to him, but managed to work with him as well over the years. And he was a super guy, and he's going to be much, much missed by the entire community. Let's hope that the uh, the Brands Hatch Bar or something will be named after him. Talking about maybe changing the name of the Kentigan to the Brian Jones Kentigan, which would be lovely. Sorry to prattle on about that, but the subject dear to us. We're now going to move on to qualifying. The guys are they've been they've been practicing all the way through the uh, all the way through the morning so far. Server went live at nine o'clock, and they were having a a good practice. There is Andy Dorman. And uh, of course, don't you just love the fact that the, the conditions are, are matched? I'm around about 20 miles away from Brands Hatch in real life. And you can see very much as we have on aircraft today, the frost is in. So the, the team have done a super job. There is Dan Zelos. In the I always some people tell me off the quick calling him Zelos rather than Zelos, and you'll hear people saying Zelos and some people saying Zelos, but Dan assures me that it's Zelos. But looking at the entry, it's uh, Zell Sport, so I might have to go back to him on that. But he, he does tell me that it is he, Zelos when we've commentated on him in Geneta Juniors, where of course he was a podium finisher and uh, now very much a race winner and front runner in the real world JCW championship dave marshall there in the 66 car the reigning champion is i think oh i know looking forward to his driving the uh, mini coopers at some point this year i was hoping it's going to be one of the touring car rounds and the prize this year of course for the sim drivers again is a run or a weekend a non-toker weekend it has to be said in the mini cooper championship which was very frenetic last year indeed some of the drivers have, have moved up actually from sim racing into the mini coopers and it is a a good entry level for drivers to come in as we look at robbie stapleford now robbie there in the 24 car i met for the first time again talking about janetta juniors met him on the janetta junior scholarship and we're going to extend that story next week about the scholar i apologize to, to mini fans but there has to be a crossover from the various formulas um, there'll be a crossover again with the scholarship next week which I'll talk to you about when we wrap up the programme later on but Robbie I met there great young lad and uh, he's going to be his exciting young talent as there is Jordan Brennan in the Riggs Esports Race Team 98 Nick Kumali sponsored car very quick last year and has uh, wrapped up e-racing championships now so he's going to be right at the front and hassling everybody for points. Dave Marshall quickest at the moment, as you can see from Dan Zelos. Jordan Brennan is third from Jack McIntyre. Robbie Stapleford fifth. And they've got time to just sort themselves out. 11 minutes 42 on the clock. So early doors at the moment. Race-wise, of course, we'll be looking at 12th place once the first race gets underway, just to see who is going to be on pole position for race two Isaac Smith in the one two three car out of the newcomers just have a quick look at how people are doing and Isaac Smith goes up to seventh place so at the moment it's Marshall and Zelos on the front row Joel Brennan and Jack McIntyre is next up Mike Epps running in fifth place from Robbie Stoke but then Isaac Smith Max Bird is in eighth, Matt Richards back with us again, the Sancho Sim Sport Sim Racer. Let's see if he can pop in a quick time. Okay, coming into virtual pit lane. The races, if you've not seen them before, we will be doing what we did last year. And rather than just switching off at the end of the race, the drivers will come into a virtual park firme and we'll have a, a natter with them. Here's Jack Noller. GT Omega RPM Esports enter car coming into pit lane to have a, a little bit of a break. The drivers have uh, more adjustments that they can make this year. If you watch Max Coates. Max has done a heck of a lot of work behind the scenes on this championship once again. I said it last year, I'll say it again, and it, he'll be embarrassed on the playback. But uh, he actually puts a number of championship coordinators 
and uh, and administration people to shame really the amount of work that he puts in the amount of detail that we've had from Max to, to put this together I've had worked on several championships over the years where we, we don't get half as much information as we get from Max on the championship which is great for him uh, running ninth place as you can see busy chasing Robbie Stapleford at the moment Isaac Smith will be looking to depose Max and another Max Max Bird at the moment is in 11th place trying to claw his way up into the top 10 points wise things differ slightly this year because we've got slightly less races we did uh, or intended to do four races per uh, per event last year this year as you see from time to time, time, to time we're down to two and one point for toll one point for fastest lap in each race 20 points for a win 17 second 15 third uh, and so on down to 1.15 place so in theory things are going to be a lot tighter than they were last year and i think dave marshall was at, at pains to point that out and he's marshall still on provisional pole for mike epstein zelos third then it is josh martin fourth place josh just being tip down the order now because Isaac Smith goes into B3, Dan Zenos fourth, Josh Martin fifth, Jordan Brennan, Jack McIntyre, Robbie Butler, Robin Stapleford ninth, Max Coates top ten, the two Maxes together, Coates and Bird tenth and eleventh, Josh Hislop in twelfth place and of course all the drivers will be busily putting when they're not practicing on the sims which they do an awful lot I have to say will be trying to work out what they can be doing in terms of getting budgets together for this year that's another bonus for me i think of the poker season being put back a little bit is that it does give the drivers a little bit of an extra chance to put together some budget we saw a late start to last year's real world campaign and pretty healthy on the whole there is mike epps mike a driver who of course has bags of experience in terms of tin top racing uh, and also with single seaters and GTs so multi experience a very very handy driver coach always good to chat to him about the drivers that he's working with at Richardson Racing was the first to tell me uh, about some of Richardson Racing's charges moving up the ladder for this year seven minutes remaining and Epps goes on to pole Mike Epps is provisional pole now not messing about for sure Dave Marshall is in P2 so it's Epps from Marshall Max Coates up into third Max said it was going to be very very close indeed just look how close those times are at the moment Nancy lost fifth ahead of him is Isaac Smith six Josh Martin Jack McIntyre seventh Jordan Brennan eighth from Robert Butler and Robbie Stapleman Max Bird 11th Matt Richards 12th he's climbing up the order Josh Hislop next Jack McIntyre here he is going well and superb stuff from Edmondson moving up the order as well. Max Edmondson, so another Max in the mix, climbing up into fifth position. So Jack McIntyre, just when you look at it, you've got multi, multiple winner last year, Luke Kingsley down in 17th place. So Dave Marshall's prediction of things were going to be so much closer this year, very much spot on. Six minutes to go with Mike Epps at the moment on provisional pole. Here is Max Edmondson, top six. This is a super performance. I dare say that these youngsters, the newcomers coming into the race, you're going to feel the nerves a little bit here, but doesn't seem to be showing from Max Edmondson. Goes into Paddock Hill Bend, down that dip, climbing up in towards the in towards Druids goes past Josh Stanton Josh giving him a bit of room which is nice and respectful from the driver of the 99 car and Max Edmondson looking to try and move up further in the top six still by X top of the stack at the moment 50.01 Jack McIntyre now second place so Dave Marshall finds himself at the minute on the second row of the grid We've still got time for that to change so there is Josh. As you can see, we've got a virtual audience, which is which is lovely to see as well. Can't wait to get back to having the race fans on track. Last year at the mini challenge events, 
we obviously covered the Sunday racing on ITV uh, live but uh, being in an ITV bubble we weren't allowed to mix with any of the paddock we weren't allowed in the paddock because we were kept in our own bubble there's Tom O'Farrell the Holiday Homes Isla entry geographically if this was real world he would be the second longest traveller behind Damien Hall in the Apex Fever 246 car but uh, good to see Tom back with us there is Kenny Press in the treble 8 just going along Cooper Strait and that was Dan Zelos going past him Epps still quickest from Jack McIntyre Dave Marshall Max Coates fourth Max has upped his equipment he said over the winter and was hoping to of course he had the the prize of the new rig the real world drivers and Max now relegated to fifth because Robin Stapleford goes into fourth place so row two now Dave Marshall Robbie Stapleford as we look at Damien Hall the death in paradise man the policeman from Barbados super guy if you haven't had a chance to watch the interview we did with him on YouTube promoting this series or the last series that we had it's very well worth a look a very laid-back character we'd love to get him over here to race at some point it'd be great for the fans to meet him and uh, Damien improves his time 23rd at the moment just ahead of Josh Stanton and Kenny Press two places ahead of him Liam Lambert in the number five car one of the Lux Motorsport entries three minutes 19 uh, remaining the first race incidentally will get underway at 10 20 if you need to nip away for anything so 20 past 10 for the first race a very quick turnaround uh, will be happening then so extra McIntyre and Marshall still the order at the moment Robbie Stapleford is in fourth Max Coates in fifth an improvement from Andy Dorman so Andy still working hard the Eden Garage Motorsports driver up into 18th place dicing with the likes of Ryan Elliott Luke Kinsley and Ethan Hamilton so as I said there there is dicing to be had all the way down the order it's a very very tight close field with two minutes left on the clock Josh Hislop goes quicker Jack McIntyre pops in a slightly better lap as well it's extra McIntyre on the front row at the minute there is Dave Marshall Dave with Jordan Brennan right behind him in the liquid molly car let's see whether Dave can make this one a quick lap goes across the line does improve goes up into P2 so we caught the end of that lap from Dave Marshall runs the curbs a little bit there uh, does Dave coming up into Druids one of the difficult things of course is finding clear track when you've got such a huge entry on this which is probably the shortest circuit that we use all season I can't quite remember the top of my head on the length of Knock Hill circuit but uh, that is for sure another tight one for the drivers to maximise the space in qualifying as Isaac Smith goes into P6 Rob Butler 7th great stuff from Rob but it's Robbie Stapleford now is the uh, pole position man so Robbie Stapleford from Mike Epps Dave Marshall down to third Jack McIntyre fourth and Robbie Stapleford here he is the driver as I said we met on the Geneta scholarship this year has been doing very good things in e-racing impressed us greatly as well at the scholarship got through to the final day and it, it impressed on impressed very much on track and indeed the other two points that we assessed over the course of the two days fitness and media and uh, you'll hear that when, when we get to, I'm sure we will get to interview Robbie I'm sure he's going to make a podium but he has set the provisional pole lap at the moment Mike Epps is second and we're on board with Max Coates so coming down into Graham Hill Bend which is one of the areas of the track you'll know that you have to be careful of track limits along Cooper straight again into Surtees the left hander then into McLaren that continues round here into Clearways um, Max working hard here to try and move up from fifth position let's see whether we can do it 
goes across the line. Don't think that's an improvement for Max. So stays in fifth place. He's got Jordan Brennan breathing down the Jordan's sharing track with Dave Marshall. A little bit of an off for Josh Stanton. Josh Stanton there on the grass. Get out of the way of the uh, drivers coming through. Will Josh? There is Jordan Brennan at the moment in P6. Still improvements going on. Robbie Stapleford on his last lap did well. Brennan coming into pit lane might have to content himself here with third row of the grid. Isaac Smith currently behind him with Rob Butler. Uh, Max Edmondson uh, is next up. Check a flag as the drivers now will get the opportunity to complete their laps. Jack McIntyre is in P4 at the moment will cross the line so that concludes our qualifying and we should be able to once the drivers have uh, settled themselves down have a matter with maybe the top three from qualifying have Polman, we're going to do the Polman, okay. So we're going to have a word with uh, uh, Polman, who nipped in at the very last minute, which was Mike Epps. First of all, though, Nathan Harrison, welcome along. Good to see you, Nate. Hello, mate. How are you? You all good? Yeah, very good, thank you. Welcome along. Glad that you're on with us. We're going to have a quick chat with um, Mike Epps, and then we'll we'll have a, a, a natter about how the race is going to uh, pan out. But uh, we'll, we'll go down into, into our virtual paddock and... Uh, Mike Epps, Mike, are you there? Congratulations on pole position. You are now the championship leader. Hello, mate. How are you? How was your Chris? <laughs> yeah, but, oh, very good. Thanks. <laughs> Congratulations on pole. Tell us, tell us about that because it was it was toing and froing, wasn't it, over the course of the session? Yeah, it was. It's a really tricky car to get right, even in real life. So, I mean, on this, it's it's so so delicate to line throttle brake everything so i can't believe i stitched that up on the last lap actually i'm i'm amazed i managed to sew a lap together i, I had a really good banker to start with yeah. and spent about five or six laps trying to get back down to that and then i just got all my marks just right on the last lap um and luckily yeah the clock had the clock was in my favor so um yeah really happy to take it but now now's the real challenge i know how quick these boys are in the race um i know how easy it is to follow as well so it's going to be a bit of a racecraft uh, orientated session, I think. How bothered are you about who's near you on the grid when you're qualifying, or are you just focused on your own lap? I'm not particularly bothered. I know that Robbie is my main contender, probably, for this, given his pace and the fact we're in the same separate championship, if you like, class um, within the two. So. He's probably the main man, but I've got Dave as a teammate who's, you know, behind those two. So he can attack and I can hold him up. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting little boxing match, this one. So hopefully there's no unnecessary contact or uh, no problems my side with the sim, because there's always a few technical mishaps uh, for some people. Um, and we'll see how it goes. OK, well, best of luck for the race, and I'm sure we'll catch up with you, with you on the podium uh, at some point. Right. Mike Epps, championship leader, gets a point for qualifying on pole position. So the championship leader, good luck for the race, Mike. Cheers, mate. Good to chat to you. Good to chat to you as well. Somebody said in the week that he sounds just like Trevor Nelson. I'll let, I'll let you guys, you can, you can put the hashtag on it and let us know whether, whether that's the case. But for sure, he, he sounds great over the air. And uh, hopefully, one day we'll get the chance to have a... And that's with him in the uh, in, on the ITV comms. I know we, we've sort of spoken about the, the chance because of his vast experience and knowledge of right the way across the, as I said in the qualifying of, of sports cars, single seaters and tin tops, and a, a great talker is Mike. So we'll see how, how the race goes as well. Um, Nathan, thoughts going into this first race for you? Um. I'm really looking forward to it. I was I was saying last night I've got itchy feet. Itchy feet. I wish I was out there actually racing myself. Um, but I'm really looking forward to it. My money is on Mike to be honest, um, as I've known him. Well, he's an experienced real racer and he's good good on the simulators as well. So I think it's going to be an interesting race for sure. Have you done a bit of bit of uh, esports yourself? What's that? Sorry. 
have you done a bit of esports racing yourself? No, I haven't, to be honest. I've never, I've never done any simulator racing whatsoever. Um, but I was watching it back last night, with clips and stuff, and it really, really does look good. Um, yeah, but yeah, no, I haven't, I haven't done anything myself. Yeah, the one thing we don't want to do is lose you from real world racing to sim racing. No, no. Well, in a minute, it's not looking brilliant. Um, hopefully, Mate. we can try try and get out on that grid for for this year, but we will see. We keep chipping away at it. That's the main thing. That's all we can do, to be honest. Is that for touring cars or back on the minis again or something? Uh, yeah, for touring car. Um, I think mini. We're done with mini now. Um, we've done what we wanted to achieve in mini. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think we've got to move on to the next step, which is ideally British touring car. So we will see. It'd be great to see you out there, uh, and it would be you know well deserved to get you out there. We're getting ready to go here. The red light sequence is underway. They're keeping them waiting, and uh, Andy Ringman, the clerk of the course, was certainly messing around with it. It's a great start by Mike Epps from pole position. Gets away well, and down into Paddock Hill Bend for the first time. They, the cars make a super sight here. Dan Zelos exploring the outside lines in the 45 car, but it's Epps who gets away from Staples and Staplewood. Jack McIntyre is in third place. Now that's been usurped by Dave Marshall with McIntyre fourth, Max Coates fifth, George Brennan as they go up into Surtees for the uh, first time. Frenetic start, isn't it? And, you know, what, what does the look feel like compared to what you're used to, Nathan? Well, it looks just like the real thing. It's extremely close, which real mini racing is. On the first couple of laps, it's so close, and it's one of them you just can't afford to make a mistake because not one car will come past before you know it'll be four or five cars coming up your inside. Um, look at them all going down the straight. They're all literally right behind each other, which is like the real thing. Yeah, a little bit of a challenge going on at Paddock Hill Bend here on lap two, but uh, Epps got away well, made the most of that. Good start from Mike Epps. Wouldn't expect anything anything else from him. The youngster Robbie Stable put in P2. Dave Marshall in third. And, well, when I was looking at the times in the practice sessions, I was thinking, Nothing's changed when we did this last time out. Marshall was, you know, ran away with the championship virtually. And uh, I thought, here he is on top of the, the, the stack again. But he's got some work to do. I know that he wants to add the uh, Sim Racer crown again because he'll get a non toker weekend in the Mini Coopers to add to his toker weekend, which he's hoping to take this year. The reason he didn't take the prize this year was he was looking to try and get extra budget together to try and do more than one round and that was, that was a, a great thing to do and a good reward for mini racing that. Coates coming under pressure so it looks like your tip at the moment Mike Epps is um, looking pretty good and particularly yeah. if Dave Marshall gets in a little bit of oh. margin margin there Stapleford uh, gets involved drops back into fourth place uh, how did you see that Nathan? It, one of them I think Definitely was up the inside, but yeah, there was a bit of contact, which in fairness, this is helping Mike out a lot to get away. Um, but like I said at the start, I think my money is on Mike. If he can keep it consistent every single lap and just chip away at it, I think I think he's going to be in for the win, unless he makes a mistake. Another bit of contact there. Just to let you know that we do have Andy Ringland, is is our real world racer, and he's the clerk of the course for this, a fully qualified clerk. If you want to watch back any of last year's programmes, where we did four races. We had a little mini lunch break. We had interviews with drivers. Um, Andy is is going to be, and I'll tell you what, he was a very busy man after each round, and I think he's going to be busy again after today. You can't go and see him, but he will look at every incident if it affects the point. Well, he'll look at every incident, whether it's relating to points or not. So um, a big thanks to Andy uh, for doing that, and for his insight, which is worth looking at. Simon Reed in the mix there in the 35 car, still by Epps is out front from Dave Marshall in P2. Now, is Dave Marshall going to do what we, we dubbed Jack McIntyre, who's in third place, the silent assassin last year, because he was the one that kept creeping up on everybody and coming in sort of last knockings and taking the uh, taking the spoils, and taking some extra points. Simon Reid there. This is Dan Zelos looking back, having a look down the inside. It's Max Edmondson, very neatly done by Max there. A little bit across the grass. He's going to run wide, and maybe that would have ended a little bit worse in the real world. Maybe. Mm, I don't think it's a Danny. He used his head there. He backed out a little bit and got got the cut back, which is something you would do in the real life racing. So that was a that was a clever thinking from from Dan there. Uh, 
Uh, Max Edmonton right across the grass. If it was that slippery, maybe would have carried a bit more momentum through the exit of the corner. I was, I was perhaps thinking, but uh, super dice going on between those two. Rocky Stapleford busy chasing Jack McIntyre at the moment across the grip line. So this is the Brabham straight. Complete another lap. Very nearly already a quarter of the way through this first race of the season. Mike Epps is the race leader from Dave Marshall. We're on board with the fourth place car looking to third. Wide line here coming up into the hairpin. Tucks back in. Was there a little nudge on the back end there? I the think side? there was, yeah. Yeah, just getting uh, close. Nothing to dislodge the car. And in fact, if anything else, Robbie's lost a little ground due to that. So Andy Ringland, he's certainly going to be busy watching all of this footage. That Zelos uh, still there. Max Edmondson back in front of him. That Richards and Max Coates are ahead of them at the moment. Coates back in eighth place from fifth on the grid. So Max has lost a, a wee bit of ground and a challenge on here again. This is great stuff from Max Bird now challenging Dan Zelos. This is just like the real world because these two both race winners in JCW. So what, what are your thoughts, Nathan, on these two guys? I think there's a bit of competition here. Um, who, who can be the better sim racer? So I know if I was in that group, they'll I'd want to get past them both for sure. But like I said, they're both really good run, runners um, in, in the mini challenge. So it'll be interesting to see who comes out on top in this little battle. Great move by Josh Martin to go through, and the Dean Martin back car goes through. Josh is on the driver we, we spoke to uh, in in the out of meeting scenario, as it were, and had a chat with him last year, and that's available to watch on YouTube as well. If you want to find out a little bit more about the drivers and uh, Josh makes up that position. So good stuff from him. As you can see though, Matt Richards with uh, Max Coates. So this is the battle for eighth position. Coates in front at the moment. Max really would prefer not to be getting defensive. So <laughs> I, think, I think Andy Ringland might be having a word after this race. What, what do you reckon though? I totally agree with you on that one. <laughs> Some argy bargy going out there. Sure. Uh, I think it was, you know, to be perfectly honest, this is the first race of this season and you're going to get that and it, it will be a case of them having to calm down. I know that Andy is uh, got, got an awful lot to be able to do and there will be penalties for drivers if Andy feels they've overstepped the mark. So they, they will um, do that. And, you know, it's a professional championship. People are paying to uh, enter this. So it's only right that the, the, the rules are stuck to absolutely superbly. Ethan Hamilton trying to get involved as well. And Tom O'Farrell, Tom running in 19th place at the moment. So out of the points. Liam Lambert's come through. He's in the points, by the way. 15th place on his debut. Had a good... Uh, I, haven't, I haven't had a chance to do... Right, we're being told here, just getting a word from from my yeah, race control that tyres might become an issue as the uh, race goes on we've got uh, 12 minutes still left on the clock and what a move from Dave Marshall going through Marshall takes the lead from Mike Epps and we really have now got a race on our hands Nathan Harrison I think if, if Mike's got any he's got to go back in on him otherwise he's going to drive away I think he, need, he needs to make a move again and hopefully if he's got any sense back him up into the pack to make his life a bit easier for the rest of the race. Yeah, this is this is kind of what we saw Dave Marshall do last year. And he's under more pressure this year, but he seems to be soaking up. Both of these guys, of course, very, very good coaches. If you're needing mm. some sim coaching. Oh, look at the control. Just uh, getting it all screwed there. It. Is he just trying too hard? He's got nothing to... He, it like looked he like said. he dropped a rear wheel. It looked like he dropped a yeah. rear wheel on the grass then. So Marshall is away now. He'll be happy, won't he, to, to see that and, and just try and get away in the 66 on the 10 tenths coaching machine this year. And uh, he's away as we watch Matt Richards still trying to close down on Max Coates. Not that far away. Max, I don't think, having to get too defensive at the minute. Down in eighth place, which would be eight points appropriately here for Max Coates to kick off his season. So Marshall out front from Epps. Going to try and have a quick look at my timing, see if we can work out who's got the fastest lap of the race. We'll come back to that. It's only one point this time rather than five that we had last year. 
Jack McIntyre still in third. That could be the story now, whether Jack McIntyre can close down on Mike Epps. Third place driver, the silent assassin, looking to try and close on, on Dave Marshall. The points, as I said, 20 points for the win. So it's not a, a huge extra amount of points. So there is more work to be done right the way through the course of the season. Here is Matt Richards again closing down on Coatsy. Interesting to see the pictures online of uh, Coates' garage, completely covered in snow yesterday, and probably is again this morning. Richards to the outside line. Max will know that he's there. If Richards can maintain the grip around the outside, he'll grab the inside of the ground hill, but he can't quite do that. Max Coates knew that was the case, Nate. Definitely, he knew that. He's not He's not silly. Um, he definitely defended going well into turn one, which is what you would do um, if you've got someone close behind you. Tom O'Farrell from Ethan Hamilton. Tom's having a really good run here as well. And uh, Ethan Hamilton, who was up in the touring cars for my solitary round that I covered, David Addison was away at uh, Spa last year, so I've managed to to the touring car commentary for ITV and Ethan was uh, returning to the class then so you know, a number of touring car drivers in the mix here and this is a really good benchmark for the likes of, of Tom O'Farrell to be racing against top line drivers and acquitting himself very well indeed back with the battle for eight back, back, Max Coates and Matt Richards and again the uh, Isla car of Tom O'Farrell runs a little bit wide so some pressure there Ethan Hampton and Reed go through as well. So Simon Reed, the Oxford racing car, goes through as well. Jack McIntyre, we called him the silent assassin. He's actually gone ahead of Mike Epps now. So is it the tyres? Um, as our producer Mike Yell was saying, causing a, a problem for him, and he's coming under pressure from Robbie Stapleford. So Robbie Stapleford now is having a look and this is all about trying to get onto the podium so Staples are closing in super shot isn't it of uh, watching the driver behind closing in coming down into Graham Hill Ben Stapleford has got Jordan Brennan right with him as well and Jordan certainly no, no slouch an esports champion in I can't remember which series it was that he won't wait in a single seat to one but uh, running well uh, Nathan is champion oh I was just about to say this is what you can do isn't it you need to go out wide Eric Clearways, the wide line at Clearways is the racing line, isn't it? But that leaves you pro. It does, it does indeed. Um, Mike now, considering his pace is definitely dropping, he's he's got to literally sit on that white line and hope for the best. Um, like said, if he's got any idea, he just needs to back him up into the pack to make his life easier. But I think this is going to be very difficult with eight minutes to go. I'm going to ask you for a prediction. Is Robbie Stafford going to get past? If so, where? I reckon so. If he... I think he's going to keep just putting pressure onto Mike and hopefully, well, he will make Mike make a mistake. Um, but then Mike's very wise to that. He's, he's probably been in this position before. Um, so, yeah, I don't really know which one to predict on this one. <laughs> we'll wait and see. Um, Mike, a little bit more circumspect as they're going to clear ways on that time through Clark Curve, coming onto the Bradford Strait once again. So we're on board with the third place car completing the uh, podium at the moment. There's Robin from Staples, but Jordan Brennan trying to close in as well. If they engage in battle, Brennan should be able to close in and edge towards another JCW E-Series podium. Rob Butler running well in six. Rob, always a front runner. Maybe we'll be getting to the reverse grid scenario at the moment. Probably time to start thinking about that. With just under seven minutes on the clock, the provisional pole for race two is going to be Josh Martin. With Dan Zelos alongside, and the driver's looking to try and get onto reverse grid pole. Max Bird and Andy Dorman. So, whatever happens, we're going to have a, a, a thrilling uh, and exciting grid for the second race of the day. Staples are too busy chasing hard in that fourth place. The one thing you can see from this, Nathan, it, it's hard work, isn't it? It is. Um, it's looking that way. Uh, definitely looking that way. Like I said, I really would love to be out there right now. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> we'll see what the guys can do about maybe getting you on the grid later in the uh, in the campaign. We, we did have yeah, test drivers coming in later on. That's not putting pressure on mm. anybody at all, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> uh, it'd be good to have you on the grid, mate. As Max Bird here 
uh, sorry, Matt Richards on the outside line of Banks Coates. He's all over the back of him, isn't it? Max Edmondson in the mix as well. And Coates, like Mike Epps, under huge pressure here. That was track limits there, though. Yes. I think Definitely, they wave, 100%. I think, I think they're I all think, track limits there. Yeah, I think they waive it here, to be perfectly honest. I seem to remember last year there was a regulation saying that they were going to waive it, but if anyone did it, you know, excessively, excessively, mm. then it would be it would be reined in. But uh, otherwise, mm. quite quite difficult to, uh, to to police, to be perfectly honest. Just having a look down towards the uh, other positions outside the top 20. David Hall, 23rd, behind Jack Dollar, and Kenny Press, 21st. Kenny just behind Tom O'Farrell, who we've had a little bit of coverage for. And then it is Simon Reid, Josh Stanton, Luke Kidsley. They're having some issues. And Alfie Glennie at the back as well. Normally expect Alfie to be further up. Big front runner, Alfie Glennie, in the Fiesta Junior Championship, which uh, BRS is a championship that I covered for quite a few seasons. And Alfie was very, uh, very quick in that. And also in the, in the Coopers this year too. So we'll catch up with them a little bit later on as we go back with... Matt Richards in the 44 and again now fourth position Robbie Stapleford Mike Epps at the moment won't be moved Nathan he's hanging on he is hanging on definitely he's hanging on there's, there's not much in it at all um, Mike's just like keep it on the track not make a mistake and I think he should be okay Dave Marshall is uh, 2.4 seconds clear of Jack Mack at the moment so the silent assassin in second position but Marshall what a cool race from him to start in fourth position on the grid and uh, come through into the race lead. Matt Richards under a bit of pressure as well. They're all certainly diving on that extra little bit of circuit there. Definitely track limits there. <laughs> <laughs> Former Q outside Andy Ringland's office. <laughs> <here. laughs> yeah, it looks like a wheel trim's come off. Uh, so th these guys are really getting stuck in. I'm not sure whether we're going to see Robbie Stapleford in Genetta Juniors this year. As I say, he was vying for the scholarship. Uh, and that could mean one of two things. It could mean that you've got a little bit of budget, but you, you're hoping for the help from Genetta if you can win the scholarship to go through. Uh, or it, it could be that maybe he'll go and race, you know, go, go and race something else. He might concentrate on his eSports or, or, or go in another junior formula. But... Um, the fact that he was at the scholarship and put on such a, a great performance at the scholarship, Robbie Stapleford, hopefully he will find people to work with. And a lot of companies now, you know, with the vaccine and everything else coming out, a lot of companies are starting to think about how they're going to promote themselves and use their hospitality budgets, um, you know, once we come out. And hopefully this will work for you, Nathan, as well, that companies will say, you know what, we're fed up with being locked away for a year. We actually want to come out now, get involved with some talented young drivers like Robin Stapleford, like you, Nathan Harrison, and put the money where their mouth is. Come out and just, just start enjoying themselves if nothing else. That's something they can do, isn't it? Fingers crossed, yeah. Like I said, it's, it's been difficult times for a lot of people um, due to this COVID and stuff. And for sure, it's affected me with a few of my partners. But like you were saying there, hopefully everyone's going to be sick of being locked away and want to come out and enjoy watching some racing and be wind and dine. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, there's actually nothing better. I mean, just putting the, the, the commercial value aside, but for most people, going into touring cars is about, you know, could be about the coverage. We're live on ITV4. Um, when we're allowed spectators there, it's Premier League football-sized crowd. Aside from that, the people that, that do come along and get involved stay with it because they just enjoy it, never mind the commercial success of it it's just such a great thing to be a part of the the family that's the thing like the year i done cleo so i experienced like the full full shebang with all the spectators there the atmosphere on on a touring car weekend is second to none um it's thousands of people there's loads of things to do throughout the weekend without even just watching the racing and for commercial side it is it is a great platform with the itv coverage and it really is the best platform to be on in in the uk i believe yeah, without a doubt. Now, Josh Hislop here challenging Liam Lambert. Liam was uh, late entry into the uh, Cooper class and very quick, ex-Super Stocks driver. And uh, haven't uh, again, because we were in a bubble, I wasn't able to actually get into the paddock and talk to him, but we swapped some notes on social media. And believe it or not, I used to watch his dad race at Super Stocks about 25 years ago, or maybe more than that. Um, so I knew the name, knew the number, because that's the number that, that uh, his dad, Gary, raced in. So there's sort of things that stick with you. And, Again, that's that's part of motor racing, isn't it? We've got a minute left on the clock, so we're going to move from the 
Liam Lambert battle. He is 16, so he's dropped out of that uh, uh, last point. And Mike Epps is still fending off Robbie Stapleford. So is it going to be the last two laps that sees Robbie maybe get up onto the podium? It's still Dave Marshall, the race leader. 2.6 seconds clear of Jack McIntyre in P2. And then Mike Epps in third place under some massive, massive pressure. Great work from Epps to get pole. Great work early on, but the race not really panning out for him. So it's Marshall still out front. McIntyre second. Mike Epps is in third place. As we look, there is Mike going into Paddock Hill. Ben, 25 seconds left on the clock. Now, is Dave Marshall going to get another lap on this one? Or is this going to be the last lap? So this is the, thanks Mike, penultimate lap of the race. So he's going to go on to his final lap. Dave Marshall is going to continue where he left off. Robbie Stapleford maybe going a little bit too far there. Extremely not, wide. Yeah, extremely, not close enough, is he now, to uh, to Mike? Mike should hold on to third, do you think? No, yeah, Mike's definitely got this. Hopefully not the curse of the commentator, though. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully not, though. <laughs> So Dave Marshall's on to the last lap and the reigning champion is going to, he hasn't started exactly as he would want to, didn't get pole position, that's how competitive things are. Little change further back and that's Rob Butler going up into fifth place, passes Jordan Brennan, great move by Rob Butler. I know Rob will want to be up on the podium where he was last year but uh, so too will Jordan Brennan for that matter in the victory volley uh, Riggs car going down into Graham Hill Bend. So that is for fifth place. They're chasing Robbie Stapleford, who in turn is chasing Mike Epps, gamely holding on to third position. Uh, and Jack McIntyre still in P2. But it's Dave Marshall who's going to take the win. The 10 tenths car, the reigning champion, is going to do it again. And he had to work hard for this one, but he made it look easy once he got in front. Dave Marshall takes the chequered flag here at Brands Hatch in the opening round of the 2021 official mini challenge E-Series. Marshall wins, Jack McIntyre second, Mike Epps, great drive, fending off Robbie Stapleford for third, completes our podium, I think we'll do the podium 3-2-1, uh, so that we get our winner uh, as the last interview of the three. Uh, whilst that was going on, I forgot to have a look and see how things were going top 12, it's, it's Max Edmondson who starts on pole for race two, with... Josh Martin in 11th place. So, uh, thoughts on thoughts on that one, Nathan? I enjoyed that. Um, I've fairness to Marshall, he, he drove he drove the race. He just kept it consistent and just just maintained that lead and just didn't do anything stupid. So, I will deserve win there. And Mike Epps drove a good race under pressure the whole race, near enough. Um, and he didn't make a mistake at the end, so he kept his kept his third place. Let's go for the driver interviews and we'll have a word with the man who started on pole but wound up in third place after a determined drive, as described by Nathan Harrison there. Mike Epps, well done on third. Talk us through your race. Yeah, cheers, mate. Uh, I made two fairly grave mistakes during that race. Both of them involved using too much track on the entry and dipping a wheel on the grass. So uh, These minis are a bit wider than the Clios that I raced in 2018, eh? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. Thoughts, thoughts for the second ones. You're, you're going to be in the mix, you know, around about midway through the. Uh, actually, no, you're going to be near the back, aren't you? Uh, ninth place. Yeah, not too bad. At least, at least it gives me a head start in this race to try and scrap some points back from that. Um, really annoying. I, I would have, to be honest, I would have pushed Dave to the end and just done a one-two, but I went round the outside of a back marker. I think Alpha Eugenia, I think, into. Um, 30s it just put me so far offline that i just ended up running wide into clearways and that was me gone for like three seconds that lap so um yeah less mistakes this time just a nice steady drive through and see if i can haul some points back okay well good luck for the race and uh you never know we might be able to talk to you on the podium again for race two so that's our sec our third um, race driver mike epps thanks mike for talking to us and uh the silent assassin he was pretty quiet during that one we didn't see a huge amount of him but great to welcome him back to the podium jack mcintyre jack well done talk through your race cheers yeah it was it was good it was it was a tough qualifying it's still close so to to kind of pip dave into into third in quality was good um he got past me on the first lap and i'd kind of at that point settled for for third or fourth but as mike said he made a mistake i mean i've, I've been racing a bit with mike in the in some of the other vrc championships i don't think i've seen him make a single mistake
mistake. So um, thanks for doing it. You know, when it matters for me, at least, Mike. But <laughs> um, no, that was that was a good race. Um, kind of deja vu from last year with with Dave ahead. But I think I've I've closed the gap. It took me took me four or five rounds last year to really close the gap and to get on his tail. And I think it's it's the start of the season now, so it should be a good one. How many other championships do you do concurrently with this? Uh, not too many. So just the other the other VRC championships mainly. So the champion of champions every Tuesday. Um, and then kind of dabbling in the odd special event on, on the other sims, but this is kind of my main focus for now. Uh, and if you win this, what would be, would it be a one-off or would you go for the budget to become a real-world driver sort of full-time? Uh, well, the dream is to do it full-time. So yeah, if I if I win, I would I would hopefully use this as kind of a springboard. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the dream. Nice one, Jack McIntyre. Well done. Great to see you back on the podium. Second position in our opening race of the year. And of course, uh, our winner, a sense of deja vu here, uh, Dave Marshall. Congratulations on the win. Get in there, Richard. Get in. <laughs> well done, fella. You're after the uh, non toker round to add to your toker round in the minis. Uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, just a bit disappointed in quali. Um, was over a tenth up um, and was going to, you know, provisionally go pole. And then just, you know, caught up another car up and couldn't get through. So, unfortunately, that was the end of my quali. Um, didn't have enough fuel to, to, to last the final two laps to, to try and pip anything. Uh, and Jack, in usual fashion, you know, just, just pipped us in the, in the quali on the very last lap. Um, but, you know, I knew I had to be reasonably aggressive at the start because uh, I feel like we've got fairly good pace, especially on, you know, reasonably warm and tyres. And then we can just look after them a bit as we get into the race. But, yeah, it's a big shame not to finish a 1-2. Um, you know, Mike's, Mike's an incredible driver and... He was looking really strong there, um, so it's a shame to, you know, try and go around a bat marker and then because of that then, you know, drop a wheel. Um, but yeah, looking forward to race two and, and we'll see what this reverse grid brings. It, it is very much closer, isn't it? You said in the interview that I did with you and uh, Max Coates in the week, it is so much closer this year. Yeah, I, I knew it was going to be incredibly close. You know, you, you, drop, you drop probably a tenth and a half and it's the difference between sort of second and tenth place. Um, Race-wise, race you know, the, the cars are, are quite a bit easier to race, I feel. Um, you know, they're a lot more consistent on the brakes, but um, yeah, it's it's lending itself to be a very tight season. Well, let you go and get ready, grab a, a water or something before race two. Well done on the win and good luck. Joel, actually, one last question. What's your go prediction on. for your... Where are you going to finish in race two? Uh, top five is the aim. Top five is the aim. Oh, okay. Or ahead of Jack Mack, should I say. <laughs> <laughs> so, good luck, mate. Thanks for talking. Well done, mate. It's pretty short. So that's our first race. We're looking forward to race two, which is going to get underway at 10.50. So, you know, very little time to, to get cracking. It is a short, sharp program. Um, so, as you can see, the cars are already on the grid and getting ready. Lights on. And again, Andy Ringland making you wait a reasonably long time. Pole position, Max Edmondson with Josh Martin alongside as they go down into Paddock Hill Bend. The second row, Dan Telos and Matt Richard. So we've got some quality drivers up at the sharp end of things. There is the race one winner. Dave Marshall looking to try and make up a few places on the good opening start. lap. Yeah, Edmondson makes a good start. Dan Telos uh, in the mix as well, trying to come through. But uh, Max Edmondson, a good opportunity, as in the real world championship here, for a driver who might not otherwise get the focus to, to just you know be seen at the front of the grid and have that pressure of being at the front. And Nathan, can you remember the first time, you've been at the front a lot, but can you remember the first time that you, you get to the front? What's that pressure like? I can remember my first uh, re reverse pole. Um, don't get me wrong, I was very, very, very nervous. But then again, it builds that confidence for you. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, it is a good thing to see these reverse grid races because it gives the other people an opportunity to be at the front and experience the pressure uh, of being up there. So yeah. It, for me, it gave me that confidence to carry on and think, actually, I can do this. Um, and it built so much confidence for me as an actual driver. Max Coates dicing it out with Mike Epps. That's a, a good perspective to have. And, uh, you know, again, this is like what Mac, Max Edmondson here is, is going to be learning from this experience as the other runners. Dave Marshall, incidentally, already up into eighth place from 12th on the grid. What's top five? wants to be ahead of Jack Mack and he is at the moment because Jack Mack is down in 12th place so McIntyre again don't write him off being in 12th place because he's the silent assassin to work his way through there is Dave Marshall busy chasing Jordan Brennan at the moment the 
the Kimoli Riggs car immediately in front of him and some cracking dicing going on between the pair of them Josh Martin briefly we were on board with his P2 and it's Max Edmondson the leader Matt Richards in third place from Dan Zilos and Coates in the mix here and through on the inside line goes Mike Epps great move by Mike Epps great to have that overhead shot we've even got a, a simulated drone unfortunately the commentator is still droning that's me I'm a real drone as opposed to simulated one at the moment but uh, Epps looking good here up into fifth place he's made a lot of progress in these opening laps which is good to see yeah Epps is doing extremely well this is where you make most of your places is the first couple of laps so if you can be on it straight away it just makes your race so much easier towards the end Jordan Brennan and Robbie Stapleford. Stapleford in the orange and black car was on the outside line, has got the position. So Stapleford into eighth place. He's going to be trying to crack Dave Marshall. He's got a couple of lengths or so walk that to try and close up at the moment. Ryan Elliott coming into the mix as well in 10th position. So Ryan there in the 0-2 car getting stuck in. Very, very strong Archie Fargy there with Rob Butler as well. Rob had a good move, remember, late doors in that first race. Wide run for Jack Mack, very wide. Drops him down to 15th place. And side by side, that uh, was Ooh. the uh, incident with Elliot that caused that. Again, more shenanigans going on there. And Jack Mack involved in that. The Dave Marshall now seventh, chasing this man, Max Coates. So let's see whether Dave Marshall can close down on Max Coates, get himself into that top five. It is still Max Edmondson out front in the number four car the Riggs eSports racing team real world driver and uh, Max running well Ryan Elliott back in 11th place Max Bird behind him then Ethan Hamilton Ethan looking a little bit stronger in this one so maybe betting himself back into eSports racing I'm not sure what other championships he's been working on Alfred Glennie making a bit of progress this time he's up into 25th place so Good to see Alfie making some moves up the order as well. On the inside line goes Matt Richards. And move, this move. is a super move by Matt Richards. And let's see whether he can make it through. Is he going to hang on to it? Great overhead shot here. So Josh Martin still trying to, to hang on to that as well. But Martin relegated to third base. He will fight back. But Matt Richards up into P2 and will start the hunt now, unless he has to go defensive again. It's one thing getting past. At what point, Nathan, do you start thinking, actually, yeah, I, I don't need to defend? Are you looking at your mirrors to see how much clear air you've got? Yeah, you always look to see how much clear air you've got. Um, for me, every time I make a move, I'll just cover that next corner just, just to be sure. Um, and after that, you're near enough covered then. But this has definitely helped Zelos out. He, he's on him now. Yeah, Dan Zilos looking to try and get onto the podium. Mike Epps is fifth, Max Coates sixth. Then Dave Marshall, Robbie Staple for Jordan Brennan in ninth. Rob Butler wraps up the top ten at the moment from Ryan Elliott. And look at that battle there. Max Coates still very much involved in things. As Dave Marshall goes wide into Ooh. Pat Elben Staple for through on the Ooh. inside line. And again, there was more contact there and off oh, into the barrier. Massive hit. Coates. And that was Max Coates, or was it? No, Jordan Just Brennan dropping that. down the, the order. Jordan Brennan right the way down, and he's going to be out of the race. And well, Andy Ringland is going to be busy, uh, certainly after this, to have a look at everything going on. And particularly when you've got championship uh, contenders or expected championship contenders like Jordan Brennan uh, getting involved there. But we're, we're looking at Robert Stapleford, sixth place at the moment. Dave Marshall right behind him. To Stapleford has managed to get in front of the championship leader. It's still Max Edmondson out front at the moment with six laps completed. We're into the, the uh, second quarter of this race. Edmondson, Nathan, has driven really well, hasn't he, off the front? Made the most of that opportunity. He has. He literally has. Just, I mean, he just kept his nose clean and just kept it consistent. And that's, that's, that's the main thing with these minis racing is just keeping it consistent every single lap and just staying out of trouble. And hopefully you're there for the end of the race, which nine times out of ten, it, it works out in mini racing. So Dave Marshall busy challenging Robbie at the moment. A little bit of contact starts to drop back a little bit, but he'll he'll be back on it. He knows that every single point this year is going to count. Not that it didn't last year, but the, the points are that much tighter this year. Max Coates still busy 
working hard as well. There is Max Bird in the number 10. Must have been, I was getting com confused with uh, the uh, 44s earlier. I think Max normally we used to seeing him in yeah, 44. Yeah, normally 44, yeah. He is, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that threw me a little bit earlier on. But Max, you'll <laughs> be familiar with delivery. Double winner at Knock Hill this year. That was that was a day for him, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. He, done, he drove well that weekend. Um, for me, Knock Hill was an absolute disaster. <laughs> I think ultimately it was for Max because he didn't he uh, third race he did yeah wound up in hospital and that, he did, it's, yeah. it's one of the I know I know everybody loves the coverage and uh, but we we miss a lot by not seeing the Saturday races don't we frequently because very often the viewers come in and it's a reverse grid race and we kind of yay yeah. we we try and get the whole story across in the commentary um, but you know very often viewers can miss out on what's happened early doors you can do sometimes for me the Saturday race it seems. Sometimes we have better races on the Saturday than we do the Sunday. Um, but yeah, the Saturday racing was, especially at Knock Hill, was good. But then again, the Sunday race was that uh, was really good with the reverse grid and Knock Hill being such a tight circuit. There was some good good moves and some good coverage on that Sunday's race. Yeah, I always love the visit up there. It's uh, I, to be honest, there aren't any any tracks that I dislike going to. I mean, they're they're, they're all good. They've all got their little quirks and and uh, areas mm -hmm. which, which provide some super racing. So. Uh, but yeah, looking forward to <coughs> not till this my birthday weekend this year. So uh, to make sure I'm not hung over in the on the Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's the key. <laughs> uh, so uh, Dan Zilos fourth position at the moment. Josh Martin in front of him. So this is the fourth place car trying to close down on third position at the moment into Paddock Hill Bend. And Dan Zilos here, just having a quick look. Where was Dan? He's he's. Uh, going to be scoring some some decent points as he does in the real world championship and uh, you know bangs in a win here and there and then gets the you know gets some consistent points along the way as well I think Dan was one of the drivers not to have DNF this year he was yeah last year Dan was consistent and I think he was the only one I think within the top five or six in the championship but didn't actually have a DNF he was just yeah he's always uh, there just kept his nose cleaned all year and in fairness to him he'd he done a good job and pipped and on the last race running a foot for second in the championship so yeah he, he drove he drove exceptionally well last year uh, it takes me back to the year before last when we had um, you were the top point scorer and you were unusually it's very very rare that we get the drop score situation come into a real world championship to affect it but it did didn't it you were the top scorer and uh, Jiggy uh, outdone you didn't he on drop scores Dan Zilos on the inside now he's been busy talking about points we'll come back to that in a minute but uh, Dan Zilos here up into mm. third position this is brave stuff around the outside line here I'll tell you what Josh Martin read that pretty well Josh he did Martin he's not he's not he's not giving that place up easy is he and Epsi's coming up into the mix as well so uh, no he's not Zilos through and big Ooh. sideways moment there for Josh Martin keep your foot in yeah, he'll keep going. Here comes Robbie Staple who wants a bit of the action as well. Now Nick's down the inside line. Well, fair play to Josh Martin. He was entertaining this royally there, but it's Dan Zilos up to third place. Mike Epps here could be on for another podium. And do you know what? That sort of consistency might afford him championship lead at the end of the day. Exactly that. That's that's what you need. It's consistent. Just keep bagging them points. Um, and oh! be there at the end of the year. Josh and Robbie getting stuck in. Dave Marshall needs to be careful here as well. What he doesn't want to do is 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 uh, have a non-finish by getting involved in what could be a potentially volatile scrap here. He'll know that. He'll he'll have a look. He's two places shy of his target at the moment. We've got just under, well, just just into the second half of this race, and uh, Dave finally makes it past. But Josh Martin, some. Uh, Robust. I know some people don't like the, the, the use of the word robust, but there, there was some robust racing there uh, from Josh. So Robbie Stapleford fifth. Now Dave Marshall is in sixth place. And it's still Max Edmondson out front from Matt Richards. So Edmondson for Richards, Dan Z lost third. Mike Epps in fourth. Epps with third place in the first race gets 15, so it'll be 28 uh, points. 29 because he gets a point pole position. And Dave Marshall gets 20, so 30 points for Dave Marshall, potentially the championship here. I'm going to try and do the maths as I go along and work it out. And uh, so on board with Mike Epps, looking really good here and on for, for perhaps another podium. 
I believe. I think he is. I think Dan Dan will be wise to that. I think Dan's just got just cover his line, and he sh should should be okay. So Edmondson crosses the line, still in lead position. I haven't seen a lot of the race leader, but a super start from him, and he's held his nerve for over half this race so far. This is the Epps Zelos battle now, and Epps down the inside line, superb start. Good move. Oh my, Good yeah, move brilliant move into Druids, and uh, you know, teed him up Very. and gets up onto the podium. Brilliant stuff. Very last second move, but it all worked out for Mike Epps. Yeah. Great start and up onto a podium. So at the moment, the only driver potentially to have had two podia out of both races, which is going to be a pretty mega result for him if he can hold on to it. And there's no reason to suppose that he won't. So let's have a quick look and see where Jack McIntyre is. He's down in 14th place, which is going to be two points. So McIntyre's going to be out of contention in terms of the championship lead. Dave Marshall's still in six, which is 10. Mm and Mike Epps is currently on for 15 which is uh, 31 so Mike Epps potentially championship leader and again that's all subject to confirmation I have to make that caveat with my maths as we watch Max Bird still the two Maxes Max Coates and Bird the other Max Edmondson out front uh, and still ahead by nine tenths and uh, Bird and Coates as they would have done in the real world still getting very well involved here So up into clearways they come again. And you can see here that Coates are able to take that wide sweep because that would have left the door open here for the Sussex youngster to nip on the inside line of the Yorkshireman. There is the Bluebird Development's car. Looking forward to getting starting to get a list of drivers that are coming back to various championships for this year. Have a quick look down the order. Andy Dorman, another newcomer, 17th at the moment. Damien Hall up in 16th, head of Josh, uh, just behind Josh Hislop, who in turn is behind Jack McIntyre. Liam Lambert, 80 from 35, Simon Reid. And then Tom O'Farrell, Jack Noller, Kenny Press, Josh Stanton. Jordan Brennan, uh, I think, managed to recover from his uh, moment. Luke Kidsley and Alfie Glenny uh, away. And Ethan Hamilton not with us, sadly. But uh, five minutes remaining on the clock. What are your thoughts on the race leader here, Nathan? Do you think that Max is going to hang on to it now? He's. Uh, He's being closed up on all the time, so he might have a bit more pressure. He is. <laughs> he is slowly coming down. Um, I think it's going to be interesting between Richards. Um, I think he's going to give it full beans and try and try and take that win. Got to have a crack at it for sure. But this is a very close Definitely. battle that we're looking at at the moment. Again, coming up Halewoods Hill and in towards Druids. Max Bird losing a little bit of momentum. Closing up again under braking as they come into Druids. Max Coates busy having a look at Ryan Elliott in ninth place. Rob Butler is the car immediately ahead of them, a little way down the road. Dave Marshall up into fifth position now, ahead of Robbie Stapleton. So this was this was the achievement that Dave Marshall was hoping for, made the prediction that he wanted, well, not the prediction, he hoped for or aimed for fifth position and to beat Jack McIntyre at the moment. He's on course to do that. Fifth place takes him on to 11 points. Depending on fastest laps, championship tie between himself and Mike Epps. So now Max Coates has a look down the inside line here and a little bit of a barge on Ryan Elliott goes through. Max Coates through into ninth place. That was a good move, very, very, very late, but he made it made it work. With that contact in the real world, would that have been a penalty or, or would the clock? Uh, it's a hard one. Yeah, definitely a hard one. I think you'd definitely be called up to the clerk of the course and I think there'll be, be some footage to be to be shown but I think you might just get away with that one yeah so Ryan Elliott then now has to try and get back because Max Bird took the opportunity to go past as well Ryan Elliott running in 11th place Jack Davidson is 12th he's the driver trying to hook himself uh, onto those guys 3 minutes 48 left on the clock still Max Edmondson leading from Matt Richards 3 tenths on the clock between T1 is and coming two. down. And this this is it. This is the battle for the lead. The gap has come down. And Max Edmondson, the newcomer to our championship, has held on superbly. Matt Richards, of course, we know is quick. And a little mistake there, I think Edmondson will be feeling the pressure here. Let's see whether Matt Richards can do anything as they come along the Cooper Strait into Surtees. We're on board with the second pace car. 
Matt Rich, as you can see, can afford a slightly wider line. This is the race line he's going for, and that could give him more momentum onto the Bradford straight. Let's see whether that pays for him as they come through the Clark curve now, onto the main straight, up the gears, getting closer and closer to the race leader. Is there going to be a gap? Not on the inside. Goes to the outside line again, might give him a little bit more speed to carry on the exit of Paddock Hill Bend and perhaps up towards Druids. Let's see what he can do. Nathan, talk us through the options here for the chaser. He's He's done it. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, cut across I've been, I've been, there. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been in that position before, going around the outside, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Um, so you, that's the thing. In, in this opportunity, you've got to try anything you can because Brands Inn is such a difficult track to, to try and get past anyone. Um, so if there's any opportunity, you've just got to go for it. And it's bringing Mike Epps into the mix now. This is a three-way battle for the lead. Dan Seagull is still in fourth place. Epps is closing up and the, the front two will know that Mike Epps is there. We've got two minutes on the clock and what a great way to head towards the end stages of our opening weekend of the season. So we're back with Max Bird having a, a look at Max Coates. Those two working hard and that's all for very good championship points. In car with Epps on the left hand, sorry, right hand side of your screen and closing in on them and Matt Richards is going to be under pressure as well now and that surely is going to take the pressure off Max Edmonton. I, if I was in Mike Epps situation now I'll just let them both fight it out and try and take take full advantage of one of them making a mistake and just coming through because Mike's in such a good position now of getting good points he just can't afford to make any mistakes. No it's worth hanging on to those points isn't it because it's going to be Indeed. neck and neck with Mike Epps uh, sorry with Dave Marshall at the top of the championship. Marshall will be uh, more concerned about the other sim races in terms of the point. He'll want the overall championship as well, for sure. But uh, a quick look back from Edmonton with the uh, North Scott logo on the car as well from the uh, Newsham family. So some valued support. And we therefore call this one the North Scott vending machine, I guess. Here we come, though. It is three, <laughs> three cars for the lead as they come down into Graham Hill Bend again. 56 seconds left on the clock. Matt Richards relentless in his chase. Mike Epps has caught them up. And a little bit of contact on the back end again. Nothing to dishevel the car out front. And it's Edmondson still holding on. Epps, Epps is right. up the inside. Epps, Epps is still up the inside for P2. Mike Epps coming up for P2. Let's it. see whether Epps can go through into the lead as well. He's on the inside line. And now Alex Edmondson is under pressure from Mike Epps. That could give Epps the championship lead potentially as well. He's looking at the back end. Oh, Max Edmonton's car, the Liquid Molly and North Scott logo's there, but Epps comes through. Not content, but now look at that round the outside. outside. Matt Richards has come back. Richards has come back on the outside line. Epps is down to third. And now look at this, but he goes up the inside line. There's a gap on the inside line, and Epps goes through into the lead. Read that superbly. Epps has got the lead. Edmonton challenging back. Six seconds left on the clock. And it is still a three-way battle for the lead, but Mike Epps has come through. Dan Z lost him in fourth place. Dave Marshall in fifth. And Mike Epps potentially is going to go away with the outright championship lead here, Nathan. And that's what I was saying earlier about Mike. Just sit there, let it all happen. And it did, and he just took full advantage of that. And look where he is. He's leading the race now. Well called, Nathan. That was absolutely a great spot from you as we're on board with Dan Z loss. He's closing in as well on the lead Here, trio. Zilos can try and get a podium. Yeah, this is what Dan Zilos is very well capable of doing in real world. Closing up again. This is the last last lap. The clock is down. Zilos working hard to try and get onto the podium. But at the moment, it's Mike Epps, the race leader. Talk about doing things the hard way, doing it on a reverse grid race when you get the outright pole in the uh, start of the meeting and wind up in third place after a couple of tiny errors. He's more than made up for that, Epps. Matt Richards, a dogged race in second position uh, is still there so coming up through clearways for the last time onto Clark Curve and onto the Bradford Strait Epps is going to take take the win and now we've got coming through Dave Marshall up into P4 on the inside line as Mike Epps takes the check and flag it's Matt Richard second Max Edmondson completes the podium super podium for Max Edmondson Dave Marshall into fourth Dan Z lost down to fifth on the last lap. We were talking about him getting on the podium. Robbie Stapleford comes through in sixth place. Josh Martin seventh from Rob Butler. Max Coates ninth, stayed ahead of Max Bird. Ryan Elliott eleventh from Jack Davidson. Then Isaac Smith, Jack McIntyre, 
Jack was in the points in 14th and Josh Hislop completing the point scorers uh, in 15th place. Damien Hall next, a good run from him ahead of Andy Dorman. Jack Nonna, Tom O'Farrell and then uh, Simon Reid. So two great races to get us underway here for our 2021 season on the Indy circuit at Brand Satch. And the drivers are going to be having a, a little breath, and then we'll go down and have a word with uh, our podium finishers. But uh, Dave I enjoyed Marshall, that one. Yeah, it was super, wasn't it, Nathan? Yeah. yeah. So, that's the thing with these that, reverse grids; it makes it so much more interesting, yeah. spices things up a bit. So you're going to be going out and, and talking to uh, the RRC about getting us in now. I need to do it. I think I need to sort <laughs> this out. <laughs> it'll be nice. It'll be it'll be fantastic to have you on the on the grid. I know there was uh, talk about getting out Port Nils last year. Didn't, come to anything but it would be we want to see you racing for real that's the priority we want to see you in the touring yeah. cars because that is so deserved mate that you, that you get into touring cars we want to see that but it would be good to see you here uh, for a bit of fun uh, in, in this championship if we can I'm going to go down now and and also Nathan I meant to say last time if you want to ask any of these guys questions as well please chip in when we're doing yeah. the podium interviews it's, it's not just yeah, we'll do. So uh, we go to third place in that race. The man who started on the reverse grid pole and drove superbly, holding on to the lead for so long. Max Edmondson, cracking drive, Max. How was your experience? I mean, yeah, I, I was uh, quite consistent, but obviously the boys behind me overtook me. They were faster than me. So obviously quite consistent, but I just didn't have enough to obviously pull it through to get the win. Um, have you done much in terms of E-Series e e racing before? What's your experience? Uh, well, I've done, obviously, GT4 and stuff with uh, VRC, but I haven't done much. I only started uh, racing in June, so yeah. That's a great. Yeah. Really good. Well done. And what's the connection with uh, with Northcott? We saw the Northcott livery on the car and the Nishim family. How does that come about? Um, I met Jordan, sponsored by them, so obviously just helping a friend out and then obviously Riggs, I'm in their team, and then MKM Durham for obviously the main sponsor. So, yeah. It's great to welcome you to the championship and have this chat. Well done on a, a super drive, holding on to the lead for so long. And, you know, two real class drivers battling with you at the end there, Mike Epps and Matt Richards. So well done, Max Edmonton. I've no doubt we're going to see you on the podium again a little bit later on in the season. Congratulations. So let's go to our second place driver and, you know, momentarily in the lead and fighting hard it is Matt Richards. So, uh, Matt, that was a, a tough race, wasn't it, for the uh, Sancho Simsport car? Yeah, a little bit tough. Um, I could tell I was uh, more consistent than Max and a little bit quicker as well. Uh, so just spent the race just trying to get as, up to him as quick as possible. Um, yeah, it was a bit rough battling. Felt like there was a couple of defensive taps that I wasn't particularly happy with but at the end of the day coming away with second in the first round is uh, still a good result very frenetic racing out there great to see see you back and i, I guess you're racing in in other championships as well to keep yourself sharp oh plenty plenty <laughs> there's plenty of championships since then and uh, picked up a couple of wins elsewhere so hopefully can bring the uh, the pace into here as well well done on a great race, relentlessly trying to catch Max Edmondson. And uh, then, you know, who'd have thought it was going to be a three or four car dice at the end? Super race and a, a great result for you in the Silverstone Composites delivery car. Well done, Matt. Thank you. Well done, Matt. Uh, last but certainly not least, the driver who started the meeting on pole position, third in first race, I think probably championship leader as we uh, head away from Grand Sax Indy Circuit. Mike Epps, Mike, congratulations. Great move to get the lead as well. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> I'm actually, I'm sweating as much as I would in a normal. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the key point, isn't it? You know, this, this is sim racing, but it is that close, isn't it? That the concentration, the physical effort is, is going to get towards parity with that. Yeah, it's somewhat harder in some ways. Obviously, there's no G-force on the neck or the arms and all that stuff. So there's, there's a whole load of forces you don't deal with with your core. Um, but every time you press that brake pedal, there's no G-force to offset it either. So you're just slamming your back into the seat. And after a while, it's it's not easy. It's quite hard. And, you know, especially with the... You, you have to have the force feedback probably higher than the actual forces in a real racing car, or most of them, to feel everything that's going on. That's that's the issue with some of the quality of, of certain sims. And 
yeah, it's it's sweaty work, but no, that was that was that was good. I wish I could convert pole to a win instead of. That's a, that's <laughs> a thing. Nice. Question for you, Mike. Where where did that pace come from? Because it seems that race you had so much more pace compared to race one. I think average pace was probably better, um, but just no mistakes. I was you know consciously leaving half a foot extra room on the outside into Graham Hill. Um, as it seems like the grass is invisible there, you you run close to the curb, but you just nip the grass and she's gone. You get a little warning on the left that sort of says a tire slipped, and then bang, she's she's round, and you lose so much speed. It just scrubs off all the speed. You have to go down an extra gear, and that's it. You know, in racing that's this close, that's enough to send you back three or four, four positions. So, no, it's, it was good. Definitely, racecraft came into play. I think Max defended a lap a bit too early. Um, at the end and that just brought them into me and gave me the opportunity to strike and uh, there was a gap as wide as my car to go inside a mat and once you're there you're there so it was it was either do it or don't do it at that moment to be honest and that that's what sealed the race win i think for me so no i'm super happy um massive thank you to 10 temps coaching team it's me and dave marshall together he's been an absolute like dream to work with just to get me up to speed uh, in this car and on this sim with a with a season of experience um yeah i think together we're going to be a proper force during this season and i'm really enjoying it so far i think you're both uh, leading your respective classes aren't you in the championship as well yeah perfect so now we need to go and do another thousand laps at the next track like everyone's <laughs> doing on the servers um that is the one potential issue I might find is once lockdown ends and I'm working as a coach in real life and potentially driving as well, um, I might not find enough time to uh, yeah, drive sitting still, so to speak. <laughs> so um, yeah, we'll see how it plays out. But yes, yeah, so it's certainly a great start. Um, Show me about the mistakes, but not bad considering I you know, first drove this car and this sim a couple of weeks ago. So. That's great. I was going to ask you actually about, you know, how, how does... Uh... The, the, the real job sort of getting in the way of practicing on the sim and obviously we are in lockdown and the Toka championship we know the Toka series has been put back to, to May which is you know a pain for people like me who are you know it means we're not going to get any any work uh, income for, for another two months but if everybody's safe obviously it's, it's worth it but um, when, when do you think what, what's the word on when tracks will be open again for coaching and things like that do ITV not give you furlough Rich Come on, surely. Uh, con contract, you get paid for what work you do. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it does It does massively affect things. Anyone that looks at my iRacing stats will see that I did a, a ton of races in like April, May, June. And then as soon as the tracks were open, we obviously we all tried to fit a whole race season condensed into like a three month period. And anyone who is involved in that will, you know, echo my thoughts on how relentless that was. I think I did over a month's work straight at one point um at different tracks doing various work I mean, instructing um i work on a lot of the driving experience side of things in terms of stuff with bmw and a few other brands um just to fill in and obviously i'm coaching two or three drivers each year um in their respective championships so you know that involves a lot of away from the circuit work as well with analysis and data and video um, and then you have to mix that in with your own career and your own prospects. It's a busy lifestyle. It's very busy. So I think definitely this lockdown I see as a chance to do lockdown one correctly. So I definitely didn't do lockdown one correctly. <laughs> I slept in a lot and wasn't as active as I should have been. Whereas this time I'm sort of, well, it's, it's easy to slip, but I'm certainly, certainly making more of my time. And, and obviously now, now we now we know the full picture. That the idea is the reason Dave Marshall's got you involved is so that you can score loads of points at the start, and then when we get back out on track for track days, you're a little little bit rusty, and he'll sneak up on you and grab your overall championship. Is that the plan? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, I guess that 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 could be a uh, an inside motive from Dave. Who knows? But I I really I really have to say I couldn't stress it enough. I really like working with him, and actually when he gets out in a real car, I'm going to make every effort to be there on on those days and uh, see if I can see if I can help him back in return really so I, th I think it'd be a really nice partnership that's pretty good Mike and uh, well well done mate so, super day today well done uh, and to all, all of the drivers that, that have you know been out and raced to, and uh, paid to enter because it's a pay to enter championship so uh, Rich Hayden are you there? 
Just a quick one, Nathan. Can you ask your brother? I need another uh, one of those Buffett car wash things, please, mate. Is that all right? Perfect Get in the car wash. <laughs> Cheers, I'll sort it out for you, no worries. <laughs> yeah, thank you, mate. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so congratulations, Bike Eps, on uh, taking the winning race to the reverse grid race. I remember coming through from uh, the reverse section. He was third from the back of the reverse section, having finished third in race number one. Remarkable stuff. Matt Richards, we heard from too, who was in second position, and Max Edmondson, first podium in the official UK Mini Challenge E Series. Don't forget that you can, and I, I should have. We we were sort of overcome with action all the way through that one of the things i should have kept on about was the, the hashtag mini challenge e series and letting us know who you wanted to win who you're supporting and uh, let us know as well you driver of driver of the race for each of them or driver of the day and uh, we can announce that next time out nathan any thoughts before we disappear today oh we got rich back with us as well rich hello good afternoon sorry i was uh, i was doing some admin in the background sorry about that good opener for you absolutely fantastic hey eh? <laughs> wow wow what a couple of races um so close so close and you know if um, if we thought that uh, it was going to be a repeat of season one it's absolutely not right it's so close i think it's the, the, it's more cut and thrust knowing that we've only got two races i would quite happily now commentate on another quality session and another two races as we did last time but it, it's added that it, it's made it sharper hasn't it Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It was, I mean, we looked at the format after season one, and we we obviously took feedback from everybody that competed and and people that were watching as well. And what we wanted to do was make it punchy, uh, and make it f uh, frantic and frenetic. And then for sure, that's definitely happened today. I agree on that definitely. Well, brilliant stuff from from you, Rich and Mike Yao. It's in support. Really appreciate both everything that you guys have done put things together and Max of course Max Coach I'm sure there are other people that I've, I've missed out that, that get involved but uh, super to be involved with and a, and a great job well done and Nathan thanks for joining me and hopefully we'll, we'll maybe get you either Rich is the guy you need to talk to now about getting you on track as, as, a, as a guest drive or in the championship or I'd be more than happy to you know get you back co-coming with us again yeah no definitely it's been a pleasure i really really enjoyed it um, yeah no it's been good some good close racing to me for me who was your driver of the day uh, I think I would have to go with Mike Epps. Yeah, well, I agree with you on that one. I, I, just that race too. Yeah, I kind of hate going with the guy that's won and anything else. But coming through from <laughs> you know the third, third position from the back, uh, pole position, set his stall out early, had a couple of errors, could have let his head go down, but that, he, yeah. he's fine. Um, same for you. Yeah, no, I agree with you on that one. I just think that race too just summed it up for me. You, know, you just let it all happen and just took full advantage of it. Um, and he's come out with a win, but yeah, and he drove drove around, didn't make any mistakes in that race too. Yeah, I've got um, for me. There's there's two guys that really stood out. The the two youngsters, uh, Robbie Stableford and Max Edmondson, both yeah. new to uh, to the new series. Uh, both really really quick guys, extremely yeah, quick, well. and yeah, did great. Yeah, definitely. As you saw from, I'm, I'm going to ask Mike in the background. I don't think we'll hear him live, but Mike, did you have a driver of the day? <laughs> yeah, Mike. Mike was basically saying to to uh, you know to post a call, and, and Mike was was our director today, and actually doing in te in television speak, doing about three or four different people's roles, which he does superbly well because he's spotting what's going on and talking to Nathan and myself, and cutting from car to car to try and pick up on the action. So. No, look up. He, he's got three or four PCs set up in front of him. He's an octopus. Yeah. He's got eight eight hands. <laughs> Amazing job. <laughs> Incredible job. So, uh, he does a great job. Yeah. We're looking forward to Donington Park. Um, and, you know, Nathan, brilliant to have you here. We're, we're going to change. Um, we've got a different commentator, I think, for different rounds. And next weekend at Donington, we've got a youngster by the name of Maurice Henry. Who Everyone's going to go, who is Maurice Henry? But you'll hear more about him if you haven't heard about him in press already who won the Genetta Scholarship up at Blyton just before Christmas. And when we were doing the media panel, this this youngster comes in and he starts you know, telling us about himself and what he knows about Genetta and everything else. And uh, one of the things that he said he does is eSports commentary. So I said, well, whether you win or not today, the scholarship, and he did win as it turned out, but whether you win or not, it would be great to see if we can get you involved in the commentary for the 
uh, official UK Mini Challenge E-Series, if that's okay with everybody on the, on the championship. And he jumped at the chance. So we're going we're gonna to have Maurice Henry joining us next week, which is, which is great. So we go from real-world JCW Mini champion Nathan Edwards to uh, Janetta Scholarship winner. And, you know, great to have that crossover. And, you know, Maurice may well look at JCW's after after Janetta's. He may continue up the Janetta ladder. He might do what Charlie Robertson did, you know, as uh, he won the Janetta Juniors and then went away as soon as he came back to You just never know where a driver's going to go. But really looking forward to working with Maurice next weekend. Um, but for this week, it's been really good, Nathan. As I say, come, come back again, Nathan, and, and uh, let's do it. And really the Definitely. best of luck. If there's anything we can do to help you with touring car uh, contacts for sponsors or anything like that then please let us know i know you know other people that are involved with the full team as well but if there's anything we yeah. can do to help you out then uh you know please shout yeah and no, i appreciate it richard thank you very much it's been, been a pleasure so thanks to nathan harrison and everybody involved in our opening round of the 2021 official uk mini challenge e-series We'll be back again, same time next week. Another two races for you at Donington Park. So from me, Nathan, Rich Hayden, Mike Yow, and all of the team, uh, stay safe, keep your distance from everybody, keep it virtual, keep it real, keep it virtual reality racing club, and we'll see you next week. Bye now. Goodbye.
Oh, <laughs> 